Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is flying? Good question. It's a puzzle platformer, or is it? That's a weird thing these days. It's hard to distinguish, or it's just becoming harder to distinguish whether or not something's a puzzle platformer or just a regular platformer. Platformers have more and more puzzle elements in them now, mostly because of Braid. You can blame Braid for that, and there's this weird blurring of the lines between the two genres. They were separate, but not so much. Not anymore. This is by a company called Ankama. You may be familiar with them. They created a couple of very, very popular MMOs, Dofus and Wack Fu. And now they've created this for some reason. We shall try and find out why. Let's go and have a look at the options menu. Now, the options menu, like many things in this game, is a little obtuse. This doesn't make any sense. I have to assume this is resolution. It just... we're just gonna guess. Alright, okay, we're, we're gonna guess at the resolution. <laughs> Who would do that? And why? I have no idea. Aside from that, it's a 2D platformer, so don't expect it to have too many system requirements or tweaking to be available. Let us go into flying, shall we? Let's find out what's going on. Welcome to the cocoon. I'm not 100% sure as to what this thing is. I have to assume that it is a level selection mechanic of some description. However, you can also go to these different areas that don't explain themselves in any way, shape, or form. I mean, what is this, for instance? I I have no idea what this is. It... Oh, I unlocked something, I think, but I don't know what the thing- Oh, is it art? Alright, I guess it's art. Alright, so I unlocked some art. Fine, now I know what this is. As I said before, this game does a really incredibly bad job of explaining itself. It's in it's so bad at it, it's not even funny. I don't know why, but the game gives you these sort of abstract hints as to what's going on. Like the cocoon, for instance. It doesn't tell you what this is at all. You can select it from the menu, but you don't go into it initially. So when you load back into the game, you load into the cocoon, and I assume it's your kind of hub area, and it's some kind of level selection screen. So as you can see here, that looks like a level select. These are levels that I've already done. Did the first few, as I usually do in these videos, to find out what on earth is going on. It didn't really help me all that much, I've got to say. Occasionally, you'll be given these signs which indicate where to go and how to use abilities, which is fine. But most of the time, it just gives you hints. Now, I would consider that to some degree to be kind of neat, certainly. And then, in other situations, it's just annoying. Because you want to try and figure out what to do. Like, it took me about 10 minutes to figure out how to fire myself out of the cannon initially. Why? Because the indicators it was given were very abstract. You've got to hold one direction and then click. And it actually said, press left button, and showed you an analog stick. Like, for a controller. Yeah, this, that's not really all that much use for me, is it? No. And now I'm dead. Now, this might look like a, a very chilled out platformer of sorts, but it can be tense at times. There are indeed many ways to die. Most of them involve the horrible red stuff that appears to pop out of the ground. Some levels don't involve that, others do. Now, you may have noticed that I was kind of switching between worlds here. Yes, it is a similar mechanic to Giannis' The Twisted Dreams. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more of this going forward. That seems to be the thing right now. Why on earth can I... What, why can't I go up on that? I would have thought, hey, let's just switch over and... Neither of them work! <sighs> Man. This is what I was telling you about when the game doesn't explain itself all that well and doesn't seem to indicate what is what correctly. And you can see here, I'm switching between the two planes. I'm like, alright, okay, fine. Let's go up here, so I guess it's just a case of drifting across. It looks like something you could maybe jump onto, but it isn't. And I can't quite make that jump. <sighs> you know, for such a cutesy game, it is actually infuriating in many places. As you can imagine, the aesthetic is one of its strongest points. Moving the character around is reasonably simple, although a little bit unusual. Usually you'd think most of this stuff would actually be controlled with the keyboard, but it's not. Most of it is actually controlled with the mouse. The basic movement is keyboard, and then your abilities are controlled by the mouse, and you can also move your cursor around. Not really sure. What? No! Oh, god damn! Oh. This is only level four, and I'm already frustrated. 
there's this little cursor that moves around. Not really sure what that's for, actually. I haven't found a use for it as of yet. Left click will allow you to jump, double jump. You can also hold down the W key in order to extend your wings. You can't hold down the left mouse button because that would, of course, make far too much sense. Oh my... I don't believe this. This is absurd. This level is infuriating. Up to this point, I was going to be saying, well, you know, it's a, it's a fairly enjoyable platformer with a few interesting puzzle elements and the kind of shifting mechanic that is essentially in Guiana Sisters. But now, I'm coming to the conclusion that it's actually goddamn infuriating. Uh, let's switch it. No! No! Oh, come on! Oh. This, you know, screw this. This is now officially a WTF am I doing. It has gotten to that point, folks. It really, really has. Come on, jump up there. This is only level four. This game ain't mucking around. There's over 40 levels, and this is level four. This level is nothing but hideous pain and suffering. All right, fly over there. there. There we go. Switch. And then switch again. And switch. Nope. Up. Switch again. Switch again. Collect the little seat. No! Yeah! Oh, my lord, why? Oh, God. This stopped being fun about ten minutes ago. Why did it have to be this level that I started with? I'm going to have to beat it now because you know how I get. I become determined to beat something, and that's what the next 20 minutes of the video involves. But, good lord. I wouldn't have expected this to be quite as silly as it is. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, this should zoom me up just a little bit. Okay, into the cannon. Fire the cannon. What the point of the cannon is in that situation, I really don't know. If I recall correctly, cannons also act as checkpoints. So you can press R and you can revisit it. Uh -oh. Let's not screw it. Oh, I should not be spending as much time as I am collecting the little seedling thingies. There we go. Up we get. Yes, yes, yes. Much better. I much prefer the other levels where there wasn't a horrible red mass trying to kill you. That was nice. That was, you know, that was chilled out. That was relaxing, which is what I was hoping for from a game like this. But no, this is horribly stressful. There we go. Switch out of that. Switch back in. As you can see, you know, it's mechanically fairly simplistic. At least with this character. I really can't speak to the others because I haven't had the chance to play them yet. There we go. Quick hop, quick hop. Up we go. To the top. Uh-oh. Missed most of those. Never mind. I'm just going to ignore that for the time being. I just want to beat this level so I can show you one of them that isn't out to horribly murder you. Switch over. Aesthetically, the game is awesome. I don't think you can really argue that. The game looks great. It's kind of cutesy, but it's also very much distinctive. I think it's probably the best way to describe it. It's got a nice definition to it, which is... Rather appropriate, considering the developer. That's something that one could also say of whack. Why would you do that? There's nowhere to go. <laughs> what, what kind of murderous, horrible intent dost thou have? Oh, wow. Get over there. The entire thing turned into red, horrible goop. I guess we're going down here instead. There we go. I'm so, so stressed out. <laughs> I want my nice, chilled out platformer back. And I've played so many of these platformers lately that they're all starting to kind of blend together, which is unfortunate. I mean, this game doesn't really have that many unique mechanics. The shifting mechanic is something that has been done before, and in my opinion, better by Guiana Sisters. There's a lot more to the shifting mechanic in Guiana Sisters. Just, can I? I can't get at that, can I? All right, whatever, fine. It changes the world a lot more. It gives it this really interesting style whereby you're switching between the twisted and the normal world. I like that a lot. Here, it's just kind of different shades. For whatever reason. There we go. We're done. I only died eight times. That was a complete disaster. I don't think it's even going to give me a single crown for that. Alright, is the next level a little bit less stressful? Please, please tell me that it is. I'd like to just be able to commentate and show you game mechanics. There we go. Wonderful. We're back on one of the levels, which is not ridiculous and the nice thing about these levels is there's a lot of detail like these crazy little characters all over the place and that's really really nice to see if you're on a level where you have to 
hurry really, really quickly because you have to deal with the fact that there's this big red mass of doom coming to get you, then you don't get a chance to really appreciate the way the levels are designed and see these really cool things. Like this guy's blowing bubbles right here and is inexplicably sad about it. I've never seen anyone ever that's been sad while blowing bubbles, so I have a feeling that's a horrible lie there. You really get to appreciate the art style and the amount of work that's clearly gone into making this game look incredible and create its own very unique style and world. You also get to approach problems in different ways and think about how exactly you're going to do it. You also get to do this. You get to sing and summon this really happy little looking flower and all sorts of other great stuff like that. And there's this feeling of inner joy that comes from making the world a better place. The same kind of thing that you get from Akami and arguably even Prince of Persia 2008 if you can get past the fact the rest of the game's awful. Uh, oh, right. I guess I'm going to have to switch in mid-flight there. That makes more sense. And when you get to this point, it's actually a really fun game. It, it doesn't really do anything special, honestly. It's just a platformer. Uh, like most platformers. I guess that's why he was upset. I love these little things which actually give you hints as you go along. There we go. No. Then we can sing. Maybe I need to get closer. Let's give it another try. Okay. Currently nothing is happening. <laughs> Am I missing something here? Okay, press space and sing. I'd love to, but it's not doing anything. As to why, couldn't tell you. So the singing thing is one of the abilities that the characters can do, and it seems like the levels are designed very specifically around that idea and notion. But nothing is happening. It's like I said, just sing in this area, but nope. Well, I don't even know, and unfortunately I think that probably means I'm going to get stuck in this area, doesn't it? That's how things tend to go when you have absurdly obtuse mechanics going on. Get up there. No, nope, can't get up there either. Well, I don't know what's happening because this doesn't work. Press the right button. I am pressing the right button. Do I have to press the right button here? Am I, is there something different to do? I'm thinking if that's connected to anything. No, it doesn't appear to. It is pointing to this, so you would think, you would think this is how you do it. Oh, man. I hate it when games do this. The worst thing is when they give you a hint. It's not like, here, solve a puzzle. It's like, here's what you have to do, but it's not going to work for some inexplicable reason. Maybe because there's something we just didn't bother to tell you or we couldn't explain the mechanic correctly. Nothing is happening. Great. Well, I guess that pretty much ends that, doesn't it? Let's go back to the cocoon and I can show you one of the earlier levels so I can at least talk a little bit more about this game. Ah. <sighs> I am infuriated by elements like that. No doubt someone in the comments will have figured it out. But at the end of the day, I'm the one playing the game right here. And it's difficult for me to figure out exactly what it wants me to do. Damned if I can. Let's go on this level. Overall, I think the problem with flying is that it's for the most part getting by on being a really awesome looking game. Which it is. You know, it is a great looking game. And there doesn't appear to be all that much else to it. It seems like it's, it's a solid platformer overall. It doesn't really have a gimmick per se. The switching mechanic is not particularly new either. And I've never really been someone that believes that originality is required to make a great game. In fact, quite the opposite. A lot of games are very mechanically iterative. And it's important that they are because game mechanics are a little bit difficult to get right, and we need evolution on game mechanics. It's not like a movie where you're telling a story and then you don't want to see the same story over and over again. You can have a different story in yet identical game mechanics, and the game mechanics are what allow you to convey the story in an enjoyable manner. If you don't have good game mechanics, then it doesn't matter how good your story is, chances are people are going to absolutely hate your game, which is not exactly ideal, is it? No, no, it is not. In this case, it's a competent platformer with a really awesome graphic style. I'm not really seeing anything that blows me away, and I'm coming across elements that are rather frustrating. Some might argue that the 
let's just call it the raising lava mechanic. The way that those levels are designed is actually an enjoyable way of doing things, and it really spices up the action. Some of these levels are very relaxed, focused on finding your way across and navigating while collecting all of the little seedlings. And then some would argue that the others are very much kind of panic levels. They're action-based. You've got to be really, really quick, and it requires Twitch skill more so than anything else. And yeah, I, I mean, I would kind of argue that that's true. It's just they're, uh, they're at odds with the way the, re the way the rest of the game is actually presented, both mechanically and aesthetically. You've got this game which is very relaxing. It's got relaxing music, really great ambient visuals. This whole pastel color thing going on is absolutely wonderful. And I love how clean the visuals are as well. They've got just this amazing definition to them. And yeah, I've screwed this up. I remember how you get all of those. You've actually not got to use your double jump before you go down there. Then you can glide, da, 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 and then what you do is you double jump and you can grab everything and then just press R to reset to the cannon which I believe you can actually do without penalty. Can you? Yep, seems like you can. Doesn't appear to be any penalty to reset into the cannon whatsoever. So that's the thing. If you were looking at this game, you'd probably be saying, oh, you know, casual, chill out, really nice ambient platformer. And for the most part, you'd be right until, of course, the game throws one of those hectic, horrible lava sequences at you and you get ridiculously frustrated by it. Not ideal. As I pointed out earlier, one of the other things the game really doesn't do well is actually explaining itself. It doesn't really explain what the cocoon is. Most of the mechanics are explained to a reasonable degree. Some of them are done in a roundabout way. They refuse to directly tell you what everything does, and the game doesn't actually have a manual either. So there are times when you get horribly confused. As I demonstrated earlier. One way or the other, it's a nice looking game. I don't think it really does anything astonishingly well. It's definitely competent in almost all areas and it is graphically very impressive. Maybe it's the kind of thing that interests you. I was hoping for more, I think. When I saw the trailer, I was really intrigued by it, but it's, it's just a platformer, really. And for a lot of people, that's going to be enough. But for me, I was perhaps hoping for something a little bit more interesting. And if we were going to stick with the whole chilled out ambient nature, I would have rather not had the heart attacks in certain levels. I think I've just played too many of these games over the last year. There are huge numbers of them. And it's getting to the point where if you want to interest me with a game like this, you've got to do something just a little bit more than look pretty. Because pretty much every platformer aside from games like VVV, VVV looks pretty. That's the easy part. Keeping me interested, well, that's the tricky one. And flying doesn't really do that. It may do it for you. And of course, you've had the chance to assess that by watching this video. My name is Vitol Biscuit, taking a look at Flyin, currently available on Steam. I'll see you next time. You see this? That looks like a record, doesn't it? No, it's that silly, floaty, green thingy that I need. I what is that? Why doesn't the game explain it? And oh, God!